All right, my name is Mike Garcia, CEO and founder of Intercharge. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with a short video and uh, give you a little short introduction. Which is right here. Here. There we go. All right, Does it have sound? Yeah. Okay. Yes. We've all been out somewhere important, fun, or to meet someone with a device that we were depending on died. That usually meant we needed to leave. That's why we created Intercharge, the new way to charge your phone on the go. To use the box, simply select a locker. Find the right cord for your device, then close the metal door. Once you swipe your credit card, the door will lock. That card will be your key later. Now, get back to your life and what's important. It's that simple. New Intercharge boxes are popping up in popular places every day, which means you won't have to look far to find a charge. And with the new Intercharge app, you'll be able to seek out the nearest charge quick and easy. Now, to retrieve your phone, swipe your credit card again. The locker door will pop open and you're done. Intercharge boxes are perfect for nearly all venues, especially airport, clubs, bars, casinos, restaurants, theme parks, golf courses, malls, and the list goes on. As a business owner, having a box in your location also means your customers are going to stay longer. And with our profit sharing model, it turns a daily problem into a win-win for all. Our dependents, our mobile devices is increasing every day. So when you need us, we'll be there. And our charge, always on. All right, short little introduction video. One of the things we want to address first is that we've all experienced the, the cell phone dying problem, right or wrong? Right, mm -hmm. we've all been there. I actually currently just purchased the new LG, which has the longest battery on the market. Had the phone for about six months now, and now I can see my battery life depleting already. And I believe we've all experienced, we get a new phone, we're like, we're excited because our battery lasts all day. But out, after about six months, we see that our battery life is starting to deplete quickly. And what it does is it, it, it helps us to, it causes us to lose contact with family, work, social media, and it's really coming to understand what is a cell phone nowadays. It's everything to us, right or wrong, right? So it's our, it's our social media, our emails. We do, I do everything through my cell phone. I don't need a computer anymore. So you know, what we're trying to do is, you know, is try to keep people connected because everywhere we go, we see people plugged into the wall nowadays. And we want to be able to have people um, uh, to be able to travel safely and understand there's convenient, easy way solutions to keeping their cell phones charged. And that's why Intercharge is expanding across the country right now. <clears throat> we have two current models right now. The, the current one that you see right here, the stand-up model, this is ones that we have in, in casinos, larger venues, airports, malls. Um, our, our wall model, which we're currently designing out of, uh, redesigning out of, a, out of a, uh, a plastic right now. Those are for the smaller venues such as bars, restaurants, and in different locations like that. Um, all of our units have advertising capability, which is when we get to our competitor, you'll see it's different than our competitors. <laughs> As you can see right here, we're partnered with SMUD. Um, we do a, a lot of things with SMUD um, and a lot of local companies around the area, but this is a, a huge, huge selling point for, um, for investors and for uh, locations because we're allowed to, we can put 30 different advertising, rolling advertising spots on these units and it allows for another income stream. Uh, the benefit to the locations that we have, that we, that we put these in, is that, say, say for example, we have a unit at Bar West downtown. Um, it helps to keep people in locations longer because we've all experienced when our phone dies, we're packing up and leaving. We're trying to find power as fast as we can, right? I experience it all the time. My phone dies, I'm, I'm going to the car, I'm, I'm, I'm going home, I'm doing something to get power because I got to stay connected with my family, my work, my business, everything that I'm doing. And so the cool thing about well, some one of the things we experienced with one at Bar West, we had a, a, a friend of ours one time passes in the mall and said, he was downtown, 20 blocks away from Bar West. His phone died. He went to Bar West because he knew the charging station was there. So what did Intercharge do? We drove, we drove business into that business. And that's another benefit for these locations that, that have us. We drive business into some of these locations like that. Um, some of our current locations that we've been testing at, Grand Sierra, one of the largest casinos in Reno. We're at Red Hawk, Westville, some bars around the local area. Um, you know, some of the intellectual property that we've secured, we're currently our trademark, we're patent pending, um, which was filed in 2013. A lot of proprietary software. Um, how we stack up, you know, as we've been doing this for four years, competitors have been popping up, you know, such as Brightbox, one of the, you know, Brightbox, Charge and Go, there's Fuel Rod in all the airports. You guys have probably seen, I was just actually having a discussion with a, a 
a business friend of mine the other day, and I've never seen anyone use fuel, fuel rod. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't want to pay the $20 for the little rod that you get because it's too easy just to sit there and plug your phone in at one of the charging stations at all the airports, and that's really where they focus on. The benefit of, with intercharge is that we allow you to secure your phone in, and, and it's safe and secure, and go back to doing whatever you're doing, come back and get your phone. You don't have to worry about tugging your phone around with you with this thing hanging off of it, trying to charge it. One minute. What's that? One minute oh. morning. Let's hurry up then. Okay, some of our investment highlights, you know, the, one of the things that we're really pushing for is getting to the market. And so we uh, started working on a franchise model that allows us for market penetration because one of the questions we always got was, it's a hardware, how do you get it out to the market? Um, the franchise model you know, allows for us to get out to the market quickly. I'll just roll through these quick. We're already in a couple of states. We have five states design. Um, the franchise model is set up to be profitable for the franchisee. Um, boom, we can pass that one. Um, our current valuation you see at fifth year, we're at 1.3 billion in profit. So we're not talking about building a small company. We're looking at going global. Um, we have big, big plans for expansion. Um, our investment we're seeking is three million, um, which offers a, a, a plenty of opportunity for the investor. Um, our current team you can see is built of, you know, top-notch executives. And let me go back up. For example, this we brought on Lee Sanders, who's current, who's been the CEO of Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, Johnny Rockus, DJI Fridays. He's actually leading our franchise division. Um, our current attorney is uh, Michelle Holston. A lot of people know who she is. Uh, she works with Greenberg Turek. Um, and that's really it. That's uh, that's the intro. <laughs> oh man, that six minutes goes fast. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot information hopefully people will, yeah. will ask during the 20 minutes of Q&A. Yes. Um, but uh, the first question we'd like to ask is how can the, this community help you? Well, I think you know one of the things that we really love is that we're a Sacramento-based company and we take a lot of pride in being a Sacramento-based company. And so there's a lot of things that I believe the people in this room besides you know helping us with you know investment there's a lot of things that we're trying to do to expand our company we're looking for you know synergy partnerships with you know technology people with you know making our you know our uh, our boxes more um, green you know solar there's all kinds of things that I think that we can get from you know the talent of people in our in this room mm -hmm. so you know we're open to suggestions always okay so now um, it's open for Q&A let's go Yes. So you mentioned the revenue sharing model with the locations in which you have it. What about from a user perspective? What's the pricing that you're, you're seeking to have? Well, our pricing is we can adjust pricing at any location. We're currently uh, testing at $2.99 for people to charge their phone. It's been working. It's kind of we've messed with the price point. Um, there are some things that we're looking to do for the future as we, um, as we design our app and, and we launch our app where people can actually just do their monthly subscription. Mm -hmm. So it would be a subscription model where you're just paying 99 cents a month and you can charge for free anywhere in the world that we're at. So, you know, some of what we're looking for this revenue to launch. Excellent. So. You guys aren't very questioning today. Go ahead. <laughs> How does it work, uh, like, uh, as far as, what's the time frame for them to recharge the phones and do you receive a notification like via the mobile app or? Number one question we get. Is so every phone is different. So you and I can both have the same phone. What kind of phone do you have? Uh, iPhone. Okay, so if you say you and I have an iPhone, same year I've dropped mine more, I got more apps in it, it's probably gonna take you longer to charge my phone. So we just tell people it does charge faster than plugging in your wall at home, but we don't promote fast charge technology. And what makes a phone charge faster is um, how much power is being pushed through the, even through the little, the little box that you plug into your wall. So, um, you got a second part of your question. Yeah, does it notify you when it's fully charged? So when you, when you, our current software, which we have different softwares that we put on different machines depending on where they're placed. Once you, you put the box, in, the, the phone in the box, you actually get an email from us thanking you, telling you what time you put it in there, um, where, what location you put it in, because you know, we're in bars and people get drunk and sometimes they leave and don't remember. And then we also have a special code that if you forget your credit card, your credit card is your password. Um, that if you lose it, then you can get into the unit through that code. But it doesn't send you an email saying that your phone is charged yet. But the thing is, once you put your phone in this box, this box lights up red. When your phone's fully charged, the, the color turns yellow. Okay, so if you're around looking, you say, oh, my phone's charged. Well, and if so. you're charging your phone, you can't get a notification anymore. Right. <laughs> exactly. 
What do you play? Yeah. 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 And one of the things that we're working on technology-wise too is where you can actually come back to the box, open it, check your phone, and close it, and it doesn't recharge you. So that's some things we're going to be doing for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the app, does it? What's the functionality there? Does it tell you where the charging stations are? Do yeah. So how our app's going to work mm -hmm. is that when you have the InterCharge app on your phone, the basic app, the free, is just you just hit it, and then the GPS tells all the little green dots to tell you where we're at, and it will GPS you to the closest unit to you. Mm -hmm. Your the upgraded app that we want to have done is. It does all of that, but when your phone gets low, you know when your like your iPhone right. gets to like twenty percent, it beeps at you and says, you know, twenty percent plug in. Then the intercharge app will will, will connect and say nearest intercharge location 0.5 miles at Walmart, hypothetically, and then it will GPS you there. And then when you get there, you're going to be able to put your code in. It's going to know that you're a monthly subscriber and you don't have to pay. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Okay. Let's do Pat and then come back to here. Okay. What, can you open one of the drawers? Sure. And so, are you guys provide a certain yes. amount of cables? All the ones that you're that are on the market today are there. Matter of fact, this one is obsolete now. Yeah. This one is obsolete now, so you really only need two. And then the LG, the new LG, has the the reversible one. So. So if, you, if your phone. If one of those cables doesn't accommodate your phone style, if you have the original iPhone, for example, um, is there a... Our new models, we're actually putting a USB plug port in here. Okay, cool. So if you have your USB, you can just put it in there. Nice, okay. So, but everything is either I or universal USB. Yeah. So, have you ever okay. thought about offering a vending service where you can sell cables in case it's not that, offered? That is something that we're going to offer in the future. Yeah. Yes, because that's another big question we get. Oh, yeah. Uh, any, like, so about how long does it need to be in use before you break even on the machine? Uh, the, the, the return on machine, yeah. advertising sold out is one month. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually two weeks if we are marketing people out there and they sell out the advertising on the box. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the rate of return is, is very yeah, fast. And you have location-based advertising, but clearly like you can drive someone if the battery's low. Say that, I didn't know. There's location-based advertising with the battery low seems right. really positive. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, just take, for example, like if you're in a bar, there's a different type of advertising that goes there as compared to a casino or yeah. as compared to a college campus. Because one of the things that you'll notice with these, with these drawers is they're large enough for tablets. And if we understand where the computer world's going, they're going smaller, right? And so we want to be able to fit every device in there. That's one of the things with Brightbox, who's our biggest competitor, is Liz's phone won't even fit in a Brightbox. She has, what's, what phone do you have there? I have the Note 4. Yeah, so. Or now I have the iPhone 7 Plus. So who sells the <laughs> advertising for this? And is that left up to? No, that's, that's what we're going to do. Our marketing team sells the advertising for it currently. Yes, and it's with the franchise model, we're working on different, you know, aspects of that. Is it, are we going to let the franchisees, which we're really not leaning toward that direction right now, it's the biggest revenue source for the corporate side of us, mm -hmm. and we'll allow the the um, just the charging side to mostly go to the franchisee, which goes back kind of to your question: is if we just did just the the charging, the return is six months, which is still super fast on the machine. What's your primary business model? Is it Franchising? Is it collecting revenue from end users? Is it advertising? Is it it's a combination of, of all of all of them, and I think you know, just like any business, as we evolve, you know, we will the business will go in different directions based on what's most profitable for the company and the investors. All right. So you've been in existence for four years. Four years. And you yes. started. So what was your primary business model four years ago? What is it now? Our primary business four years four years ago was just to get something that charges phones and then we put it in and then we had, now then we advance into the advertising, yeah, advertising the app and the apps the future and I mean the apps apps are future of everything nowadays and so you know and then of course there's advertising through the app and all the different things so I think with the fact that there's a full blown computer inside this thing yeah. sky's the limit for what we can do. So um, you said you're trying to raise three million. Is that right. seed, or are you doing a Series A? It's going to be. We're kind of in the middle of. We've raised. I've invested. 
you know, about 150,000 of my own capital and about another 100,000 of outside. So we're probably more of an A round to get this where we really need it to be. What, what are you gonna do with the money? All of our money is gonna go into um, units. Everything's gonna be into units and the franchise model and building our, our marketing team to sell out all of the marketing on the units because that's the most important thing is bringing revenue back into the company. Where do you build the equipment? Um, they're all, it's all done in China. I spent a month in China designing these units. Uh -huh. so. so do you need capital so that you can, uh, like to meet demand? Do you have like a yes. backlog because you can't We Our backlog is about 500 locations. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So the money would help you capitalize the build? It's to capitalize the build and to, to meet the demand. We've signed uh, a contract with National Mall Company. We, you know, we, we kind of, we, we had some really big meetings early on, probably even before we should have had, you know, like with Verizon, you know, Verizon said, okay, we're at 500 locations, then, you know, we're, we'd look like to, you know, partner with you and have power by Verizon and provide all of our, you know, our, um, our mobile hotspots on here which is one of the things we also want to do for the future of Intercharge is when you're an Intercharge subscriber, you can actually log into our mobile hotspots when you're around the units, which is another huge revenue source. Um, and then we actually met with Outerwall, which is the owner of uh, Coin, uh, was it Coinstar and Redbox. And they were basically like, okay, go show us proof of concept and call us back. And you know, at that time, they just bought Eco ATM for like 380 million. So, um, so that's, you know, we, we've had some really big meetings with some really big corporations. So is that screen or the advertising side, one, is it video capable? Yes. Okay. Two, can you tap on the SMUD ad right now and take any action on that? No, but that is one of the things we want to do for the future. We want interactive marketing. So right. let's just say that 24-hour um, fitness is up there. You know, because one of our goals, we met with 24-hour fitness and we're working on a contract being in every location around there around the country in 24-hour fitness, but to where you can actually just tap into 24-hour fitness at one of our outside locations of 24-hour fitness and interact with your interest in being a 24-hour fitness um, member. And then one of the things that we want to do for the future inside 24-hour fitness is where you can actually go to the kiosk and sign up for your spin class and all the cool stuff there. So there's tons of, the, the, it's limitless what we can do with this thing. So you might want to look into mind-body integration, which you can actually schedule from machines right. like this for, for that person. And then also look at Zoom Media, and they do all the in-club advertising for every health club in the nation. Yeah. Um, Is Zoom who we were talking about? Yeah. 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 So you might be yes. able to, I know there are salespeople that make a lot of money, you might be able yeah. to put some talent there. Well, that's one of the things that, as we build this thing, is that we want to build synergy partnerships with like a Zoom or a clear channel to where we just, they sell all of our marketing and we just take a percent of, the, of it yeah. instead of having to go out there and build this huge sales force. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, it's yeah. more profitable for the company not to have, you know, 10,000 people out there pounding the pavement. We just have their people doing it and we get a share of the profit. Um, I have a technology related question. Sure. Um, cordless charging. Right. Is that something, uh, I don't actually know if it works with all phones. Uh, but it, it seems like that would be super cool uh, unless it just takes longer to charge that way. I'm glad you asked that question. And the reason being is that there's all kinds of different technologies that are currently out there. There's a technology that's being developed right now where you can actually walk into a room with um, ultrasound waves, I believe it was, where you can walk into the room and your phone will just start charging if you're within a certain distance of this, this box. The, the cool thing about Intercharges. We're our 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 whole business model is a real estate play. We want to get to the market as fast as possible, faster than our competitors. We were ahead of all of them. Brightbox passes up a little bit, but we'll we'll catch back up to them. The great thing about it is with that technology, we can just add it to this. So, you know, and one of the things that we're excited about with the the ultrasound technology, if you know it gets passed, and you know, because I know me, if I walk into a room and there's things bouncing through my body, I'm not going to be real excited about it. But you know, if it does happen to go, you know, it could be another thing that we can add to the unit as a subscriber. It's just something that you get to have as you walk in as an intercharge subscriber. Your phone just starts charging when whatever location we're in. So I know you mentioned that the boxes are large enough so that a tablet could fit. Now, in terms of yield, though, if you cut half of those in size, you could get more charging stations per unit, if you would. Right. Um, is there a limit? So in that particular size unit that you have right now, is there a limit to the 
the boxes and compartments that you could have? Is there a reason why you went with six in that particular chunk? One we're actually all? redesigning all these. So we're like, this, this one's going to have 12. Okay. You know, and we're actually designing, we have another design where it just has phones because casinos, people aren't walking around the casino with tablets. So we're going to have units that are designed for locations. Like this is a great unit for college campuses. One of mm -hmm. our goals is to be on every college campus in the country mm -hmm. because, you know, those, that's our market. You know, the kids, they're all, they all have tablets and they all have cell phones and they all need them charged. So, um, but yeah, even our wall mounted units going to have um, eight s slots where currently has four. So, and then they're going to be, it's just going to be designed where you can actually slide them in and it's just better use of space. I take life off for Pulse in the morning. That would be nice to have. It. Right. Uh, in the actual cart. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, some, something we can do for the future. And that's why we're really trying to get this design <coughs> with, the, with the hard plastic. Yeah. You know, we're trying to make it out of recycled plastic mm -hmm. done so it's lighter, it can fit on, on things like that. So, anyone else? Other questions? One, one core question, international. Sure. Are you mainly in the U.S.? Are you going? We're just in the U.S. We, I mean, we've had interest. We had a, a company out of Canada that's called us that wants to be involved. Um, but one of the things I learned with previous businesses is don't step too far outside your box. Uh, you know, keep it as close to home as you can. Because if you go outside the box too fast, then things just start falling apart. There's regulations government. Yeah. yeah. Brazil is actually really big on Yeah, we actually had a group in Brazil that wanted us down there for the Olympics. Um, but it was just, it just we just didn't work. It wasn't able to work it out, you know. So yeah, that makes sense. That's, that's good trade. Yeah, I mean, our our business philosophy is that we we want to get this thing launched and done right. We want the foundation to all be solid. So we're not trying to jump through outside of our box and do things that are, you know, we don't need to be in Brazil when we haven't got it mastered here. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's really we're trying to, to do smart business with that. Anyone else? Other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So